News 46 is brought to you by... At Healthcare Partners Medical Group, our mission is to provide the highest quality of healthcare to each and every patient, from infants to seniors. Our total care model means our doctors, nurses, and professional staff are specially trained to help you make the best decisions for your health. With five locations in Pahrump, we are local doctors you know and trust. When you choose Healthcare Partners, you are choosing the personalized, quality healthcare you deserve. We want to thank you for choosing us. Quality care starts here. Pahrump Nugget, Progressive Cash Drawings, Mystery Point Multipliers, Mystery Gift Days, Extra Cash for Four of a Kind, Bingo Bowling Football and Food Specials. Looking for constant action? Look no further. Prompt Nugget Hotel and Casino. 46 is brought to you by Healthcare Partners. News 46 is also brought to you by the Bankruptcy Center of Pahrump. When it comes to sensitive matters like bankruptcy, take a breath of fresh air by calling an experienced and compassionate attorney at the Bankruptcy Center of Pahrump. 775-727-4747. News is also brought to you by Pahrump Dermatology and Skin Cancer. When you need the best dermatology care in Pahrump, call Pahrump Dermatology and Skin Cancer. 775-727-9800. News 46 is also brought to you by the Pahrump Nugget Hotel and Casino. Located at the intersection of Route 372 and Highway 160, you can call the Pahrump Nugget at 775-751-6500 or you can visit their website at www.parumpnugget.com. Tonight on News 46, the acquisition by Golden Gaming is complete. A birthday celebration for Dr. Seuss. And how to get your ham radio license. News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46. With Rick Vale and Rhonda Van Winkle. Local coverage from Deanna O'Donnell. News 46. Local coverage you can count on. Good evening, it's Friday, March 2nd, 2012. I'm Rick Vale. And I'm Tony Joe for News 46. Town Manager Bill Kobarger has sent an email regarding the down service signs on Highway 160 and Mesquite, as well as southbound Highway 160. According to Nevada Department of Transportation, the service signs are down because NDOT is in the process of moving the signs approximately four feet farther from the highway. Mr. Kobarger adds that NDOT believes it is a safety issue. NDOT advised that it will be about another week or two before the signs are going to be back up. All right, so safe driving out there, folks. The Prompt Town Board voted 4-1 to one to offer current town manager Bill Kobarger a three-year contract effective July 1st of this year. Board member Mike Darby voted against the agenda item. And Terribles Town and Terribles Lakeside closed down temporarily to switch owners from Affinity Gaming to the new owner, Golden Gaming. Well, Golden Gaming has completed the takeover of Terribles Town and Terribles Lakeside from Affinity Gaming. We're going to speak to Jeffrey Rathjen. Transition went uh, fairly smooth yesterday. Had a couple of computer glitches, but as far as turning everything over and turning everything on, we're open, operational, and ready to go. Slot club's going great. So we're very, very happy to be part of, uh, more part of Pahrump and bringing on the other two properties, being part of the Golden Gaming family. Uh, we had a few glitches as far as getting the connections going over, so we opened up a little bit later than 8 a.m. But we got our guest in and got him changed over to the new G-Card, and uh, everything's working great. Just hit both properties this morning, and everybody's happy and cruising right along. What's going on with the players' cards? Well, the players' cards used to be the A-Play, and that card stays with Affinity and with Terribles. We have what's called the new G-Card, and so those players are able to come over, get their new players' card, keep all their points, all the bonuses, all the benefits, everything from the club stays the same. The only difference was the card change. And um, so are, you're asking people to come in and change out their cards then, or are they good for a certain amount of time? Or Well, what we're doing for 
yesterday, today, tomorrow, and Sunday, we're actually having a celebration as far as changing the cards over. We sent out a free play offer, so they get some free play to come in and change a new card. Plus, we're doing cake and champagne on both properties at 2, 4, and 6 p.m. for coming on down and changing your card over. Is there going to be any changes with Terrible Town or Terrible's Lake Site? Daily operas are staying the same. All we're doing is doing some of the management. I mean, as far as the team members are concerned, the guests are concerned, they just come in and enjoy themselves. Terrible's Lakeside is a big RV resort as well. Is there going to be any difference in what's going on there? Uh, I can't wait to get a hold of some wagon masters from across the country and bring new faces to Pahrump. Hopefully future residents coming to Pahrump. You know, a lot of these RVers are always shopping for a home. So hopefully a lot of this stuff is going to drive more revenue to the valley. And I just, I'm excited as can be about getting that RV park. There are some changes that happen in the RV park. I know like about a year ago, some of the locals, they could buy like a daily pass or monthly pass. Are we looking at that as well to you know, utilize that? I don't that? know all the ins and outs as far as what they did for the locals over there, but I can assure you, if you guys know the nugget, we're going to put entertainment out there. We're going to have some fun. We're going to have a lot of things for the locals to come out and enjoy. It's a beautiful facility. It's an incredible facility. We had a lot of uh, entertainment out there, so the Nuggets going to continue the entertainment that they do right here at this facility as well. I, I have got our entertainment director already looking at who we're going to book, when we can book, how we can book, where we're going to put them. I mean, all those things that draw excitement and have some fun. I mean, we really do enjoy having a good time. So we got that facility out there to be able to, to enhance it by bringing some music out and uh, enjoy the poolside and the lake and all that. Come on, we're just going to have a great time. This is Deanne O'Donnell at the Prompt Nugget for News 46. And speaking of the Nugget, as we head into our first break, here's what's happening this weekend at the Prompt Nugget. Hi, I'm Jeff Simmons here at the Prompt Nugget Hotel Casino. Uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome uh, Terrible's Town and Terrible's Lakeside to the Golden Gaming, fam Golden Gaming family. It's going to be nice working with them for a change. So welcome to, to Golden Gaming. Also, on our stage bar tonight, we've got Sidro Amato uh, for live music on, from 7 to midnight. Friday and Saturday night. And this is our month for our anniversary. It's been 11 years since we've been here. It seems how time <laughs> flies when you're having fun. 11 years, uh, March 24th, Saturday night, we're gonna be celebrating our anniversary. Uh, the first thousand people in into the door shows their club nugget card at the slot club booth and receive a free t-shirt. That's the first 1,000 people through the door. And also be serving uh, cake and champagne from six to eight, and that'd be in front of the poker room. And uh, also, every Monday and Tuesday, we have, starting from 4 to 8, every 10 minutes, we're giving away uh, $111 in free slot play. That's every 10 minutes. And that's on Monday and Tuesday, excuse me. Friday and Saturday, we have a uh, random drawing, and it's every 30 minutes for a $100 slot play. News 46 is brought to you by... Affiliated chiropractic and affiliated physical therapy. Come in for your free consultation. Call 775-727-8900. Our goal is to create the individual treatment plan that will restore your health and end pain. Welcome back to News 46. Well, before cell phones, iPods, and the World Wide Web, there were ham radios. These fail-safe communication devices still are used for many purposes throughout the world as well as during emergencies. We spoke to Dick Grady about the upcoming ham radio examinations. I'm here with Dick Grady. Ham radio, what is ham radio? Uh, ham radio is primarily a hobby of people who like to operate radios and talk locally and around the world. Mm -hmm. However, we also have a uh, public service component to it in that we tend to uh, <clears throat> help out in emergencies particularly when, for example, power outages keep the uh, police and uh, fire equipment not, not, that won't work anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, one notable example is Hurricane Katrina. Mm -hmm. Hands were both the only communication available then. We have a repeater up on the mountain, which is solar powered, didn't need, didn't need like AC power to operate. We have an Aries Races groups here in town. Yes, I'm a member of the Aries Races group. In fact, I'm one of the directors of it. And they operate through the Nye County Emergency Services, I believe. That's right. We're affiliated, affiliated with the Nye County Emergency Services. We actually use their bill, billing to meet there. And uh, that's where we have our exam, ham radio exams, too. Can anybody be a ham radio operator? 
Oh yeah, there's, there's no there's no there's no re, there's no restrictions at all. You can be a citizen, non-citizen. I've heard about ten six-year-old kids getting licenses. And is the license required? A license is required to operate a ham radio on the ham radio frequencies. Uh, the license term is ten years. In order to get a license, there's a question pool of qu questions and answers mm -hmm. that you look over and I'm familiar with. Mm -hmm. The question pool's around 450 questions and answers, mm -hmm. and uh, we picked 35 and gave you an exam on it. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you pass 26, you got your license. So how would a person study for this ham radio <clears throat> examination? You could uh, download uh, off the internet the question pools. There's public information. Or you can buy books that lead you through the study of it. Is it expensive to buy ham radio equipment? Uh, well, yeah. Well, I, I don't want to say neat. Yeah, very expensive. I mean, uh, a good quality handheld unit might be $150, $200. And so what is some of the benefits of talking to people worldwide? Well, you don't need wires. For one thing, it's wireless. Uh, oh, and other things. We do more than just talk. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Hams can help write their own TV stations talking to other, t other hams. Mm -hmm. uh, we use uh, Morse code, of, uh, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have digital communications. Mm -hmm. We had the first internet before the internet came along. Do we have an examination coming up soon? Oh, yeah. We have an examination coming up a week from Saturday, the 10th. Mm -hmm. uh, we have them every two months on the second Saturday of the odd months at noontime at the Nye County Emergency Management Building. That's off a basin be <clears throat> behind the courthouse. They're right there on Surrey Lane. Right on Surrey Lane, right across from the Animal Rescue. And so uh, how can a person get um, uh, sign up for these examinations? Well, you don't really have to sign up. Just show up and take the exam. If you want any more information, just give me a call, 751-5242. Theodore Seuss Geisel was an American writer, poet, and cartoonist most widely known for his children's books written under the pen name of Dr. Seuss. He was born on March 2, 1904 and died on September 24, 1991. He published 46 children's books, which were often characterized by imaginative characters and rhymes. The Nye County Schools celebrated Dr. Seuss's birthday today by reading his books, watching movies, and dressing up as the many characters in his books. Today here at Nye County Schools, Assistant Superintendent Dale Norton went around to the schools to read some books by Dr. Seuss. The more you read, the more things you will know. The more things that you learn, the more places you will go. I've uh, been out reading to some classrooms in the schools today and uh, picked out one of my favorite Dr. Seuss books to, to share with the students and having a great time. The kids are responding a lot to the books. Um, is this the one that you're reading to all the classrooms, or yeah. are you picking different ones? Yeah, it's a selected book that I've had for all the classrooms. So I'm getting real proficient at, at reading it as I go along in the day, but uh, uh, interesting context to the story and, and good interaction with the kids. They love it. So do I. We're here at J.G. Johnson, your old stomping ground. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, of course, every student that sees me with the blue backpack want to know if I'm coming into the room to read because they know what's in there. So, uh, <laughs> What fun. is in there? The books, and then I, I reward my listeners, of course, for, for paying good attention. And uh, um, if they've been here long enough, they know that. And, and the students at other schools know that, too, because there are some students from here in those schools. So There's some treats in there. Uh, Jeff Skelton, the principal here, is also going around to the rooms and reading? I believe so. I just got here a little bit uh, ago. I've been, uh, I actually started at Rosemary Clark today. I was in 17 classrooms there. I didn't read in all those classrooms, but I was observa you know, observations in the 17 classrooms. Five classrooms in, in Mance, three classrooms in Floyd. Uh, cleanup meeting at the Root Center and then here ending today at JG. A busy day. People are dressing up for Dr. Seuss's birthday. Yeah, I, in fact, I, uh, I've got the hat in my bag. That's one of the things that's in there. I pull it out for the book and uh, get into the character of Dr. Seuss and uh, proceed forward. And then we have a conversation about the book afterwards. Did we also ask the students and teachers to dress up, or did they decide this on their own for today? I believe that was a site decision that they made uh, for, for Reading Week. We also spoke to Anton, who made Student of the Month here at J.G. Johnson. 
um, we um, watch movies about Dr. Seuss um, on my teacher's computer. This is Deanne O'Donnell at J.G. Johnson Elementary School celebrating Dr. Seuss's birthday for News 46. And we're going to check in with James Oscarson who is campaigning for Assembly District 36. Well, great, Deanna. We're having a, a great time out there. We've got all our uh, all our people in place now. Took a little bit to do that, yeah. but we've got our signs in. We're going to start putting signs up this week. Working on some uh, advertising, doing some things with people. So we're in great shape. Got a great group of volunteers helping us. What are you hearing from the people now? You know, I, I think what we're our message is is very clear. We're focused on health care. We're focused on education. We're focused on energy kind of issues. I think that's what people want to hear. That's what we need. Talking about some some different ideas, some public private um, partnerships that we're going to be able to do with the with the groups like we're doing currently in some of the areas. I think those are the kind of things we need to stress and and work to represent the people in Carson City. You're talking about volunteers. Can people volunteer for your campaign? Absolutely. We're always looking for volunteers to help us with signs, help us with uh, uh, with getting literature out, getting getting the vote out to the people. We really just need to get people out to vote. That's what's going to be crucial this election. Are you going around meeting the people? Are you having any meet and greets coming up? We have some meet and greets coming up. I don't have a date certain. It will be in March, towards the end of March sometime. One of them will be here. The other one will be actually at um, uh, probably at the winery. So we're looking forward to doing those and, and really excited about the uh, about the opportunities. How can people find out about your campaign? You have a website? Website's up. It's uh, www, I'm going to have to read it, uh, James Oscarson 2012. Uh, and they can always call me on my cell if they have any questions, and my cards have all got the cell number on them. And now here's Eileen at West Star Ranch Animal Rescue with this week's Save a Pet segment. Save a Pet is generously brought to you by Auto World at 727-8000 and Greenspan Brokerage at 751-6200. Put the green team to work for you. Hi, I'm Eileen. I'm here at West Star Ranch Animal Rescue and I'm here today with Sugar Bear who is a black lab mix. She's all fixed and ready to go and be adopted out. She's going to be $75. You can come down and see her anytime at 780 East Mance. Our phone number is 727-9273. That's 727-9273. If you would like to sponsor Save a Pet, give us a call at 727-9400. To adopt, donate, or contact West Star Ranch, call 727-9273. And folks, we'll have more local news and a look at weather coming up for you right after this break. Please keep it here. Welcome back to News 46. We're going to introduce you to Louis DiCanio, who is a candidate for Justice of the Peace. I'm running for, uh, uh, I'm a candidate for Justice of the Peace here in Perome. Tell me a little bit about why you decided to do that. Well, here's the thing. Uh, I've been a nine-year resident of Pahrump, and uh, I've seen a lot of things that I like Pahrump. I think Pahrump has got great potential, but there's some things that need a little fine-tuning, and uh, part of that fine-tuning is our, our legal system. I see uh, a lot of cases being dragged on, which they shouldn't be dragged on, and I've got a a vast business experience and, and in business you can't drag things on because when you drag things on you go broke or... Tell me a little bit about your background. Well, I was born and raised in Chicago. I was a, a, a graduate of Catholic grade school, Catholic high school. I went to Washburn Trade School, Kennedy Electronic School. I was an eight-car journeyman electrician. I was a worker and I was in supervision. I'm also an Army veteran. I was a military policeman. I was assigned to the stockade down at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, where I dealt with prisoners all the time. And it's not like you see on TV. When I was, when I was a prison guard, the only difference between me and the prisoners was I had an armband that said MP on it. I didn't have guns or tasers or nothing. I had to deal with people in a one-on-one -on -one situation all my life. When I grew up in Chicago, my father, he, he, he taught me certain values. His philosophy was you treat everybody good, mm -hmm. but you always stand up for yourself. Mm -hmm. My mother, her philosophy was you don't have to be wealthy to be clean and respectable. Mm -hmm. and those are the values that, that I grew up with. And I'm, I would say I'm sort of like uh, uh, I have these old school values, uh, the old school ways, which I believe in. It's worked well for me. I believe in whatever you have in life, you should earn and stuff. 
Now, as far as running for justice of the peace, I feel that with my business background, my business experience, now, even though I'm not an attorney, I've got extensive legal background. I've owned property in uh, Chicago. I've owned property in uh, Las Vegas, in St. George, Utah. I've owned property out here. I've handled all my own legal dealings. Back in Chicago, I owned uh, several uh, uh, bars with food and liquor licenses. I had a deal with law enforcement, with the legal system, with the bureaucracy. I had to deal with the street gangs, the mafia, and everybody else. And sometimes back in Chicago, they were all one and the same. But you had to learn how to deal with people. It's like a learning process. Yeah. Now, I didn't get uh, uh, what you call like a, a degree for what I learned. But sometimes things that you learn can't be measured with a diploma. I've got knowledge that could never be learned in a book. But that knowledge I'll bring to the court system w when I'm in there. News 46 weather is brought to you by Healthcare Partners Medical Group with five locations in Pahrump. Local doctors and professional staff providing total care from infancy to seniors. News 46 weather is also brought to you by your local dairy farmers. Dairy products are very important in maintaining a healthy body. For more information, you can visit their website at nevadadairycouncil.org. Welcome back to News 46, everyone. It's Zach Fuentes here with your weather. Today we had sunny skies, but it wasn't that pleasant of a day out. It was kind of chilly out there. Our high was 57, but with our winds, it made it seem a lot colder. Our winds were coming out of the north at 11, and our gusts were right up to 20. That's top gusts, maybe even higher. So it was very windy, cold, nippy kind of day out. Our pressure was at 30.29, and our UV was at 5 moderate. Humidity at 29%, and our sunrise was at 6, 12 a.m. Today's record was set back in 1967 at 82 degrees. Tonight looks like we're going to have clear skies. Our low is going to be 33 degrees, and our winds to come out of the north at 6 miles per hour. Gusts at 11, and our humidity is going to go down just a little bit at 28%. Our sunset will be at 5.41 p.m., and tonight's record was 19 degrees back in 1939. Tomorrow looks like it's going to be sunny and our high is even going to go up a little bit at 65 degrees. The low at 39 and our winds to come out of the north northeast at 5 miles per hour. Our gusts at 8 so it looks like that breeze is going away and we're going to have a little more of a pleasant day tomorrow. Good way to start the weekend. Our UV index is going to be at 5 and our sunrise will be at 6, 11 a.m. Our humidity at 19%. And now looking at our seven-day forecast, our weekend is looking pretty sunny, but once we come back into the work week, Monday and Tuesday is going to be kind of cloudy, and then Tuesday looks like we're going to even have some high winds with our gusts at 20 miles per hour. Wednesday and Thursday looks like the sun is going to return, and then Friday possibly some clouds out there. Our high is going to get up to 76 degrees, it looks like, on Monday, which is not too far away from the 80s even, so we are starting to warm up a little bit, which is going to be really nice. Our lowest low is going to be 39 on Saturday as well as on Wednesday. And today's worst weather was in Sundial, West Virginia, where they had strong thunderstorms. Back to you. Thank you very much, Zach. And folks, just a quick note. I have to apologize on behalf of everyone up here in KPVM. Our eye lines are a little off because we're having some tef technical difficulties with our prompter. So if you could just please bear with us, we're going to have all that fixed up for you real soon. And this Sunday, March 4th, is a food drive for the disabled American vets at Who's Dunes on Highway 372 and Linda Street. It will begin at 2 p.m. And Next Level Comics will be holding a grand opening tomorrow, March 3rd. The doors open at noon. There will be free hot dogs for the first 200 people. Also, lots of discounts and sale specials. Next Level Comics are located on Frontage Road and Basin, pretty much right across the street from CVS. And announcing the 2012 Toddler Swimming Lessons Grant Program to provide formal swimming lessons to toddlers beginning with kids four years and, up and younger. Excuse me. The presentation schedule for Pahrump will be held on April 10th at 7 p.m. For location and more information, you can call 702-303-0521. And the Wrangler Junior Rodeo will be held this weekend at the McCullough Arena, located at Basin and Highway 160 tomorrow and Sunday. It all begins at 9 a.m. And the Friends of the Library is having a big book sale at the Pahrump Nugget Friday from 9 to 5 and Saturday from 9 to 3. They will have paperback and hardcover books for sale. 
And on Sunday, March 4th, there will be a Ladies' Day only event at the Lone Wolf Outdoor Shooting Range. Make sure to bring your guns, targets, ear, and eye protection. It will be from 9 a.m. to noon with a potluck lunch following after. For more information, call 910-9663. And Walmart is having a spring into summer fashion show this Saturday, March 3rd at 2 p.m. over at the store. So lots of events this weekend for you folks. And remember, as we, head in, as we end the news today, that does it for this edition of News 46. I'm Rick Vale. And I'm Tony Joe. And remember to come back with us tomorrow for our weekend review from everyone up here on the Hill at KPVM. We wish you a safe evening, and we'll see you here again tomorrow night. Until then, good night, Rob. Good night, everyone.